What's up, dudes and dudettes? Ugh. Sharing some vice time here with you. Okay. Well, it's right in your face, isn't it? I'll swing it this way. But, uh, yeah, just wanted to kind of do a nice little fun Q&A, see if there's anything you guys wanted to talk about. But for the most part, I want to talk about, I do a lot of talking about trout. And as much as I love trout, you know, sometimes it is nice to talk about other species that I will target. I know I'm a little early, and so, but this is going to be very informal. I'm just kind of hanging out with you guys. So uh, make sure that if you, when you join up, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, please, and thank you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we, we talk a lot about different stuff. Like, just got done doing some vice stuff, uh, tying here. I'll show you what I whipped up. So... I'm experimenting a little bit with some different types of patterns. I see three, two people in here, and uh, only one like. That's a bummer. But uh, trying different patterns here. This is like uh, I've been fishing a lot of stand-up jigs, and I wrote something. Uh, Thanks, Norse Lake. I, I whipped something up to her. It would sit like this, hook point up. So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's a little bright. I'm sorry, but hook point is up, uh, and it'll ride like this. Another one, uh, let's see. There's some standards I've been tying to, but you know, I, we don't get a lot of shad by me, but I will be fishing down south very soon. So I usually, when I tie flies, I like to tie uh, pretty much similar base colors, but also tie some different stuff that um, will penetrate the water differently. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you a little bit today. We're talking about bass, but for example, if it's really shallow and I want to fish for bass that uh, are going to be fairly aggressive, maybe they're guarding their beds or whatever, here's just an example of, um, you know, uh, a, a white streamer. I you can see that, but it's, I, it's tied with deer hair. It's not super packed really tightly, but it's, it's, it's tied with beer, or deer hair so that um, it stays kind of sub in the, in the surface film. Uh, this will fish differently. I'm sorry about the lighting. I, I don't want it to be too bright for you, but um, So this will fish differently than a, fl a fly I tie for example this When I go down south, I'm going to use this Okay, this is again when you want to fish white Okay, these will penetrate the water column differently. This is very sparsely uh, dubbed, okay, and When I fish this all right, this will get down quicker Okay, on a sinking line than this will. Obviously, this being deer hair. And then between that, I have a couple different variations of things. For example, okay, here is a zonker stripped uh, streamer uh, with a white pearl, like a laser dub, if you will. And this, okay, is a similarly versioned fish or fly to this, except I can fish them in different parts of the water column. So if I want to fish on the top, I'll fish something like this, the big guy but it's not that big, it's, it's just deer here. Then I'll fish, you know, something like this for just underneath that. If I want to go even deeper, I'll fish this, the one with the, the bead head. And then if I want to fish even the farthest down, I'll fish this, the super, you know, pulled back version with some, you know, sink tip. Got other flies too, like, it's a, this is my, like, chartreuse and white pearl type of most of these because I'm fishing deep water I want to I don't want to tie too much material on so I try and keep them slim and trim but uh, let's see what else I've got here oh this one okay this is kind of woolly and gnarly all right this is kind of I'm experimenting a little bit with some wider gap hooks and this is going to be uh, it's it's mar mostly marabou and dubbing so when it I want it to I'm experimenting with craw patterns, so I have a couple of, uh, in the Lucky Tackle Box this month, or this month or last month, I can't remember, um, I received some, like, 20 mil or twenty millimeter shanks, and I'm going to experiment with some craw, some craw claws on some shanks and see what I can do, but I wanted to experiment with a body taper, and this is the body taper I chose, and it'll, it'll, I'll have different, two different, um, I'll have, uh, antennae coming out, but then I'll also have craw arms coming out that will free float themselves um, and I'm gonna I have a special way to do that and uh, 
you know, I'll, I'll, if it works out well and it looks great and it fishes well, then I'll do a video on it. But um, I don't want to jump the gun. So there's this. Still water for early season browns. Okay. Are they stockies? Are they wild? I'm assuming they're stocked. Okay. Uh, because typically still water in the, in the East Coast here at least. Um, still water browns. Oh, here's another crawl pattern I, I've been messing with for drifting specifically. Um, I have to trim it still up, but uh, it'll fish well. Um, I would suggest uh, for early season, I mean, the similar similar uh, patterns and similar... Uh, stocked? Okay. So similar patterns, uh, they like streamers, small streamers. You can use, um, you know, forage fish from in the area, or you can go with some uh, normal stuff that you... Uh, would typically fish for them in streams. Um, just your presentation is going to be different, okay? Damselflies will work. Grasshoppers. Uh, early season, you're probably not going to get too many grasshoppers because it's not going to be warm enough, depending on where you are. If you're in the south, then that may be the case. I'm not sure. I don't know where you are. I don't know the water, but I would get in contact with people who do guides. Uh, TU, local chapter in your area, I'll probably have some guys that will, will help know your water better, okay? Um, let's see. Ooh. Another couple patterns I've been really digging lately. I don't know what they're called because I really, honestly, kind of just experiment most of the time. Okay, so this right here is just a. Uh, it's like a. Most of it is a uh, combination of either marabou or craft fur. It's kind of like a, a woolly bugger, but I added a collar and uh, like a top to it, and then that's just um, dubbing looped. Squirmy wormy, that is very true. Uh, squirmy wormy um, underneath something also. So if you want to use uh, an indicator system, or if you want to uh, dead, you know, stick it or a high stick it, that'll probably do fairly well. Um, but when you're in a, in a stocked, in, when you're in stocked water, you're probably, I mean, personally, if you have access to it frequently, it's a lot of fun to fish, you know, uh, top water. So if you're able to get there when there are uh, you know, dragonflies popping off, or um, you're able to fish during the fry, like if there, if there are other fish in this pond, like um, imitate some fry, then uh, browns, when they're big enough, will attack fry. And, for example, you can use a black-nosed dace or a woolly bugger or something along those lines to imitate them. Um, ironically, uh, something very simple to tie and really easy to cast, because that's sometimes more difficult. This is a little larger than what I would suggest, but it's just a little bit of marabou, right? So you have marabou tail, double stacked, um, uh, uh, then wrapped up the body, uh, counter wrapped with some gold wire, a little bit of marabou, and then I just laser dubbed the top, put a little bead head on it. You don't need a bead head, but depending on the depth. And this right here, okay, stockies love streamers. Um, they, uh, if they're big enough, okay, but also squirmy wormies, um, brightly colored eggs, even even if there's no eggs in the water, um, stock fish, uh, you're basically imitating pellets, uh, or you're causing, you're, you're looking for a reaction strike. So, um, I'm going to open it up if you guys have a, yeah, kind of like a blood leech, exactly, yeah, exa yeah. so um, that, that was kind of the idea, is a combination of either, if it looks like a leech, it looks like a, a streamer, or something along those lines, I... I've been trying to create flies that I can fill a box for for smallmouth as well as largemouth, and if I come across, you know, piker or something like that, I can tandem rig them. So, like for example, this fly here, along with this fly here, if I tandem rig them, I can get a longer, similarly, almost articulated fly, um, and I would attach it the same way I'd attach like a, a, a nymph rig. And that's a, an, enough meat for a pike to be interested, perhaps. Okay? Perhaps. Small pike. Pickerel. Um, same thing with, like, uh, we, we have gar. Uh, not quite big enough, probably, for a muskie, but you never know. Uh, a lot of guys catch muskie on small lures, believe it or not, or flies. So, um, I've been experimenting, though, to try and imitate a plethora of, of items. So, um, you know... In this case, this might be a leech, this might be a, a bait fish, this might be a crawfish. Um, it, depending on, am I in the, the wheelhouse of a largemouth that's spawning, or if it's swinging in front of a bass, a smallmouth in the current that fast enough, are they just going to instinctively take? So, uh, 
same thing with this. Like, is this a crawfish? Is it bait fish? You know, when if it's swinging, are the two arms going to be uh, just articulating a little bit? Or is it going to be uh, imitative enough to look like a bait fish or and a crawfish or perhaps something else? I'm not sure, but we'll have to see. What's going on, guys? If you guys have any questions, please, by all means, just shoot as I'm spurn off here. But I'm just... Uh, just got off the vice and I kind of wanted to do a Q&A, you know, if you guys have questions or, uh, you know, to go back to the still water tactics, presentation is going to play a huge uh, part in that, you know, delicacy on presentations um, as well as uh, understanding depth. So when you fish still water, uh, instead of using a lot of split, you might end up having to use an intermediate or sinking line. That might vary depending on what you're attempting to fish. If you're fishing the shallows or from the bank, you probably can get away with the floating or intermediate line. But if you know where the fish are going to be shallow, okay, then you might want to throw some flies with uh, cone heads or with sink tips or put a little T14 at the end of your line. I don't know what the body of water is, if it's a small pond or if it's a deep pond or they're just thrown in there to cruise. I'm not sure. But you'll have to figure that out by... I would assume getting a hold of some local guys that fish that water, and that will probably be your best bet. Or if there's a guide service, um, I'm telling you that the paying uh, for a half day at a, on a small pond for still water is a learning experience that will teach you how to fish it in a different way moving forward. You know, I mean, there are also, <laughs> speaking of still water, there are flies that I like to tie for. These will work for browns, but also, I mean, obviously I tie these ones for bass considering the hook, but because these are like six odd hooks or like four odd hooks. So a little mouse pattern, nothing crazy. It's super easy. Everyone is tight lipped. That is too bad, man. That's why like sometimes if you need to pay for the service, it will pay for itself because, you know, if no one's going to be willing to help you, then, then you might have to find other means of getting that information. So here's like the same pattern, okay, in like a super heavy gauge bass hook. And this, because it's foam and it's super tightly dubbed underneath, will, uh, I, I fish this kind of just pulsing it, so it'll, it'll work like this up in the water, and then the tail will swim, obviously, and bass like it, but also, at night, browns like it, so it's a nice little thing. And then, I've been experimenting with tubes a little bit, too, so here's a, a tube fly I tied. Can't upload, I can't upload in the winter, oh, I missed that. Can't, let's see. Maybe. There we go. I can't upload in the winter because I can't drive. I'm only 13 and can't afford amazing stuff. Huh? What? Upload in the winter? You mean you can't fish in the winter? Um, so this is like a, a, a tube fly, okay? And so it's just craft fur, and it's a tube. Um, and I put a little peacock hurl on the sides there for the, uh, for the, the lateral line. But I'm excited to try this a little bit. It's a little tiny guy. And then I've got another couple here. Just simple little tubes, and then experimenting with some small poppers and some bigger poppers that are like mice. Okay. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm so I'm a king. How can I get my channel to grow? Yes, so I'm a king. A kid maybe? Is it a kid? To grow? Do you have any tips? Okay. Um. Oh, so you're asking? I wonder if that's a typo. So you're asking how can, oh, okay. Um, in the winter, you know, you're all right, man. Uh, yeah, so if you're a kid and you're, you know, you, you want to grow your ch your channel, if it's fly fishing specifically, or if it's fishing in general, um, there's a couple different things that I'd suggest. One is you stay committed to the cause, you know. You're not going to find yourself doing too much all year. So there are occasions where I'll tie a fly on, on film, um, and... You know, I'll, I'll hit it up in the vise, and I'll tie it up, and then I'll hold off on it. Or I'll put a nice informational video together, and I'll hold off to upload it in case there might be a chance. Like, I didn't, I'm not fishing this weekend. Um, there's been a, a recent death in the family that's caused some changes and some things, and my little one is also sick, and there's a couple of other things that I'm not going to get out. So uh, one thing that I'm going to have to do instead is I'm going to have to use some material that uh, I've saved up. And that's typical for most guys, you know? You can't... The, the key to YouTube is to stay consistent. Upload consistently. Now, if that's once a week, twice a week, three times a week, once a month, your consistency is going to be different than everyone else's. And so, 
to stay consistent, you need to be prepared, okay? And it might only be a 30-second video. I'm fortunate enough to, to have been doing this long enough and to have good connections um, through my own self-sacrifice to be able to, uh, you know, have products to show you. I mean, I have two different things, three different things that came in that I want to show you at some point, but I want to hold off, right? Because who knows if next week I'm not able to get out, I haven't been able to put together a video, maybe next week we'll have a live stream that I will have to show you what came in the mail, right? Um, same thing with like, you know, uh, if you know you're going to have to do a presentation later, but you know you're not going to have time, are you going to hold off to do it or are you going to get it done early so you have it for later? That's what I would do, is I get it done early. So that's why, like, you know, if I have 30 seconds to tie some stuff, I'll tie a bunch of stuff and I'll show you. But uh, for the most part, it's being consistent. It's being honest. It's not, I'm not going to claim to be an expert in everything, right? Um, Norris Lake, I appreciate you coming in, buddy. Um, next giveaway is at 5,500 subscribers, which is only 150 away. So you guys need to get the word out for them to come see me and then I will be able to get rods out to you and reels out to you right that's another thing is uh, you I will typically say that if you want to be successful on YouTube your heart has to be in it for the, the right reasons right I do not make a lot of money on YouTube I do okay uh, in fact if even if you were to go search up how much youtubers make uh, I can promise you that it'll give you a wide spectrum of how much they make okay and most of us are on the lower end of the spectrum that they tell you about, you know. And so uh, most of the reason I will do these things is because, well, one, I'm a teacher, and so I enjoy sharing information. But in addition, I like sharing information that I enjoy, right? And so this is kind of like a classroom out of a classroom where if people enjoy fishing, well, then, and I enjoy fishing, and I know insights and in certain things, like through guiding, that... I can share, why not do that? And why not do it for free, right? Rather than charge people, uh, this takes less than guiding does, okay? Um, yeah, fishing frenzy, no, hey, I, I would say, uh, you know, if you have 38 subs, then make sure you understand how YouTube works too. That's another thing, is make sure you go and you take the class that YouTube offers to understand how your analytics and how the, uh, the, uh, SEO works and stuff and how you can use your tags to help you. That's another thing. You need to know how the actual engine works. But I just enjoy sharing my my catches. I enjoy sharing my information. And so if it makes me a couple bucks, cool. If it gets me connected with individuals, cool. Like, I really hope to go to iCast this year. Yes, YouTube, if you go to their creator stuff, you can uh, go to, like, your creator tab. You'll be able to take... Um, it's a free like uh, webinar type thing where you they teach you how YouTube works, okay? Uh, you can also probably Google that, you know, uh, how the search engine works and how uh, the analytics work and how their uh, scaling works. So, um, but again, don't ever expect to make a lot of money. I, you know, I started. I, I had a YouTube channel. I didn't. It wasn't really a channel. It was. I, I hopped onto YouTube once in a while to watch funny videos or whatever, or to learn like you are, but there was nothing at the time. And after two, three years, I'm like, you know, I really like hunting, I really like fishing, so um, I threw a couple informational videos up, and, you know, they did okay. And then uh, I decided that, you know, I really prefer fly fishing and, and fishing in general, but, and those videos did fairly well, and I've, no, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, this coming week, I'd like to go bass fishing, uh, not that we in moving water, but if it means that I bring the camera along, awesome. I don't do it. I don't revolve my life around YouTube, so that's a big misconception that you need to worry about. Is that I would definitely wouldn't worry about having YouTube be your life. Share what you enjoy, and good things will come from that. Do you guys have any fishing questions specifically? Whether it be about bass fishing streamers, or whether it be trout fishing, or whether it be, you know, any questions? There are five of you right now. If not, I will ramble. I could talk about different streamers and how I choose when to use a streamer. Beadhead versus uh, unweighted versus sink tip versus sinking line versus intermediate. 
Why don't I start with that, I guess, while we're waiting for questions to roll in. There are a couple different streamer types that I really like to characterize uh, my box into. There are streamers that I tie with mostly Marabou. There are streamers that I tie with mostly uh, Deer Hair. There are streamers that I tie with Zonkers or, or, or like uh, Rabbit Strips. And there are ties that I, or flies that I tie with mostly dubbing. Um, uh, to answer your question, fly fishing Texan, what favorite pattern for smallmouth? Uh, I would say it's very hard to beat a woolly bugger, but you can f tie some stuff like, uh, check out Kelly Gallup, okay? He is incredible. His, tie, his, his ties are simple, but they're effective. That's what I try and do too. Like his sex dungeon or zoo cougar. Uh, does really well, but I change the colors up, okay? I also really like uh, flies with, uh, this is all dubbing, from a dubbing loop, and I tie it really shaggy. So, like, if you look, it's very shaggy, and, and whenever it fishes, it's bulky enough to draw a wake, but when it, because it's marabou in the back, it will slender out and, and swing well. Uh, I tie, there's, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but there's blue crystal fl uh, pearl flash in there. Um, I also do it with uh, chartreuse and white, um, and this is a bad example, but I'll do it with deer hair as well, if you can see the crystal flash in that. I don't have a ton of flies with me right now, but uh, my favorite pattern in general to catch more fish is either something like this, uh, there are two flies that popped up there, like this, in a black or a dark brown or an olive, all of this key, uh, or something like this, where I'll imitate a crawfish. Uh, but favorite one to tie in, or to fish in general would definitely be a popper. I mean, how can you not enjoy seeing a bass bulb on a popper? Actually, instead of a popper, take that back. Mouse pattern. All right, you, I have my own fly tying company. I tie my own flies. The company's called Alpha Pro Flies. I was wondering if I could send you a few to you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Shoot me an email. It's twig, the letter N, timber at yahoo.com so you can send that over and um, I'll get you the information to send that stuff over um, I'll gladly critique anything but again I, I consider myself a better angler than a tire I just tie in order to support my addiction okay so uh, I, oh there are more flies here I suppose yeah so like there are, and then I also have flies that I will build bodies up on right um, these fish differently than the deer hair ones that are packed. These will fish a little lower in the column than these. Okay. What tapered leader do you recommend for small streamers on a five weight? Um, okay. And these go away so quickly. Okay. Uh, what tapered leader do you recommend for small streamers on a five weight? Stream fishing for brookies. Okay. For brookies. So tapered leader. Uh, Realistically, I, t I tie my own leaders usually because I go through them like crazy, okay? But um, for brookies, I, I think you can get away with any tapered leader. Uh, I've fished anything from Umqua, uh, which are great. Cast King came out with some new ones that are good. Um, they're good too. Um, I mean, realistically, I've also fished extremely cheap Chinese ones to no fault. Uh, and also, I mean, I fished... I Sometimes I'll just take... For streamers, I'll take odd X and I'll two foot of that to one X to two foot of two X, and then um, that's a six foot leader, six seven foot leader. Uh, will do the trick on a streamer, um, especially if you're using intermediate line. Steve Strauss, do you use a tippet ring? I do occasionally when I'm tight line nymphing. Uh, I usually don't indicator fish a lot, probably because I don't fish big big waters too much. Um, and if I do, I'll usually fish a streamer or dries, just because. Um, I don't get there very often, and so I'm only there in order to, um, what do you call it, to uh, fish specifically the hatch. Um, so yes, I do use a tippet ring. I'm not promoting my channel, but if you have time, could you look at it and see if a few flies I've... Um, yeah, man, I will do my best. Um, none of this, the, the, the actual chat will save, so if you can remind me in the email that uh, you send out, that would be great, and I'll take a look. No problems. More questions, more questions. This is way more fun to answer questions than it is for me to ramble on about uh, random stuff like these giant, you know, articulated monstrosities, right? Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, different types of poppers, okay? Obviously, deer hair bugs are great, um, but 
as an example, you have also little, uh, what do you call it? So the shape of the head will affect the way you fish it too. So a cone that will flip the opposite way, okay? So obviously like, you know, if it goes this way, it'll draw its attention, but it'll skate better. So on still water, that'll matter. Um, it'll also disrupt, it won't pop, but sometimes you need to get their attention, but not too much to intimidate them. So fishing something like that, like a sneaky peat, okay, uh, will be more effective in some ways. I see eight people on, five thumbs ups. Guys, give the video a thumbs up, please, 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 okay? Um, do you guys have any more fishing questions? Okay. Um, could you give a demo on how to tie egg flies? Oh, yeah, I tie egg flies. Um, you know, I'm somebody that uh, I will fish anything that will catch fish. That's mop flies included, right? So egg flies, um, I don't actually have the materials out without being too... Uh, basically, if you have a yarn material, okay, and you put the hook on there, <coughs> pardon, what I'll do is I'll put a... I think I have a hook right here. Um, somewhere. I don't know if I have the, uh, the right proportion hook. All my stuff I keep in locked drawers right there. I know you say locked. Why locked? Well, why not? I have little ones. Okay, so there are two types of flies. If you're talking about a yarn fly, okay, then that's different, but I don't know if you've ever heard of the company Otter, uh, Otter's Soft Milking Eggs, but it's really cool. Um, basically what I'll usually do is this. Uh, you don't need to do it this way, but this is what I like to do. I'll put a tiny little brightly colored, not black, brightly colored tiny, I mean like maybe a millimeter or two wide um, thread base on an egg hook. Not this hook, this is like a, a streamer hook, right? And then what I'll do is I'll get the, the yarn necessary, okay, whether it be in my hand or in, through a dispenser, and I'll put it on there. And uh, I like to have the, the, the thread base there so that it would it will hold better when I go to tie it on. Okay? You you cinch it down, cinch it down, cinch it down, okay? I like to put a little bit on the bottom too, okay? But it's not a, a deal breaker. I gather it all up, and I pull it up really high, and I will put one wrap or two wraps in front, one wrap, two wraps in behind, I'll pull down taut, I'll go back up front one more time, and I will, uh, then I'll take, not my good scissors, these are max catch scissors that I like, I'll take the material scissors, that's what I call them, and I will, depending on the size of the, the, the yarn that I want to cut, I'll cut usually about eh, two, three millimeters above, maybe one centimeter at the most above the hook, and then it'll out. I take my fingers, or I'll even take a, the back end of my, my bodkin there, and I'll push it, and I'll, and I'll hold it, and then I'll take my whip finish, or I'll finger whip finish, and then I'll snip it tight, or at that point I'll take a little bit of UV resin, or I'll take some uh, Sally Hansen hardener if I'm tying a bunch. So there's that. And then that's your, your yarn fly. If you've never heard of so, uh, Otter Soft Milking Eggs, here's an example of one, okay? They come in so many sizes and colors, okay? This is the actual body of the egg. I'll put a, a thread base on, same same way, and then I'll take one of these. They're soft, squishy. Um, you take the, where are they here? They're over there, but it, it came with these little needles. You put actually a little bead on it that's the color of a yolk. You push it in to the actual body of the of the uh, the egg, which comes in a variety of colors too, and then I will then feed, uh, put a little bit of glue on here, and I'll feed this over. My key to my better eggs are having a, a milky veil on it, and it come and the kits usually come with veils also. So the soft milky veil is what catches me more steelhead than any egg pattern that I tie. I even put a veil on my uh, egg patterns that I tie with yarn. However, um, it's not a necessity. Okay, so that's how I tie my eggs, and I found great success. But I actually catch more fish on other specialized patterns I tie than eggs. How do you retrieve a popper? That is a good question. So to retrieve a, uh, a popper, um, I will usually, if it's a frog imitation, I will hard strip like six inches, 
and let it kind of kind of bob away. Let the legs do their tingling. Strip again. Okay. I might even throw some some uh, nose action in the uh, with my rod tip. I'll strip again, um, or I'll do two short and a long, two short and a long. But that's different than how I retrieve, for example, a uh, a mouse fly. So a mouse fly, I'll actually just chug, 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 and have it pulsate, kind of like a swimming, you know, mouse. And that seems to catch me more fish than fishing a popper in a traditional way. Um, and again, that's monofilament on a floating line. What do you fish best? What what way do you fish to best present two team, two stream dries or a double uh, dry presentation? So. I guess to answer your question, um, what way do you fish best to present two team dry flies? Okay, so if you're fishing a stream, um, learning how to cast a, like line control is extremely in, in important. So if you're fishing a stream and you're able to layer your dry flies, that's better. And what I mean by that is if you can throw one slightly um, upstream and one slightly downstream uh, with enough slack between the two to where they can one can usually attract and one can uh, get the job done that might work out in your favor uh, and that will depend on the stream situation and what have you so like a reach cast is great um, a snake cast is, or a squiggle cast is great a, a pile cast is great so if you don't know what those are, I might do videos on those, but a reach cast will um, essentially uh, put a bend in the line to um, to allow for better drift, but you can do the same thing, and as long as it, that reach cast um, is affected in, affects the, the leader itself, it does a great job at keeping the flies one ahead of the other, and so what that'll do is one is the attractor and the other one is the finisher. Um, uh, and then by adding a little bit of slack in that with either a pile cast, which adds slack between the two in the form of shortening the distance between the two, or a squiggle cast or, or, a, or a snake cast that will put a few snakes of uh, bend between the two, that does a good job as well. Um, but uh, for a tandem dr team dry fly, if you're going to fish, for example, something that's visible and something that's not, then you're going to have to make sure you can see which one is visible, and I'd like that one to be ahead of the one that like a, a Griffith's Nat or something that's really small to see. That's my personal pr preference on that. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Fast and aggressive. Oh, okay. So as far as the popper goes, um, that varies, buddy. Uh, if they are, you have to let the fish tell you what, what to do. So if I will try, usually I will amp up the aggression in how quickly I retrieve. So I might start with slower retrieves, and if I'm getting lookers, but they're getting too much time to inspect the fly or the popper, then I will quicken things up. And if by doing so, um, they don't have enough time, that's usually a good thing. Because <clears throat> if fish can look at a fly too long, then they're gonna be able to understand or to discover which ones are real and which ones are not. So I would, st I would start slow and quicken or the pace up. Uh, Fishing Frenzy 101, that is twig, the letter N, timber, at yahoo.com. Okay. Sorry about that. The throat is getting scratchy. Good affordable 5.6 fly reel. I had a cheap plastic reel and it came as a combo and now it's stripped. Uh-oh. I had something like 20 bucks and under. Okay. So... <clears throat> what you're going to notice is online there are tons of companies that will uh, create something that is a mimic or a clone of something that is very expensive. For example, there are tons of Hardy and Sage and uh, Reddington um, uh, replicas that will fish very well. They will be better, hands down, than your plastic reel. Uh, check eBay. Check Amazon. I would suggest if you... There are three companies that I would get a reel from at the moment. Uh... The, on the super super cheap level, there's Cast King, okay. Uh, they have probably the best customer service, but they're also the most expensive of the three. I'm going to present. There's Max Catch, decent uh, customer service, uh, tons of variety in their reels, and the last being um, uh, shoot.
I apologize. Um, I will start with those two, and then if I finish, if I remember the other one, um, oh, Pisky, uh, Pisky Fun also has a couple that are cheap. Um, I've never used them, but I know people like them. Um, I'm not going to deter you from getting out and getting on the water, regardless of whatever it is you need. I would suggest, regardless of what you buy, know how to maintain a reel. Keep the, the reels um, dragged off when you store it, because that will compress the disc, and your uh, and your reel will lose its drag, okay? Um, and then, you know, make sure you're, you're not throwing it around and dropping it. Make sure you're taking care of your stuff. If you take care of your gear, it'll take care of you. I would check out those other, those companies, though. Okay, so Fishing Frenzy. Uh, T-W-I-G, the letter N, timber at yahoo.com. Okay? Um, when you when tying a Frenchy nymph, what color hot spot do you tend to see works best? <laughs> Use yarn or dubbing. I'm a dubbing guy, okay? Reason being, I like things that are really buggy. So um, a Frenchy, I try and keep it fairly traditional. So I like uh, I like purples. I like pinks. I like to blend the two. Um, reds, reds are great. Uh, I have used chartreuse during like uh, if I want to imitate caddis. Um, and I've also extended the bodies if I wanted to imitate uh, still waters, uh, like, you know, damsels and stuff. So, uh, the sky is the limit. Yes, sir, friend. Fishing frenzy. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, so, I would say, if it's going to be a hot spot, I will make a hot spot, right? So, orange, pink, purple, uh, red, chartreuse. Um, what's worked best? That would depend on what I'm trying to imitate. If there's a caddis hatch going off, green works. Chartreuse. If it's uh, steelhead season um, and I want to use a Frenchie, then orange, red, and per pink work really well because, well, they might, if the water's fast enough, see it as an egg, right? Or an egg sucking leech. And so they'll smack it. So it'll depend on what you're fishing for, but it'll also depend on, uh, you know, I would just suggest trying a bunch, right? I would, if depending on how many, uh, and that's pile pride. What's going on, buddy? Um, so yeah, pile pride. If you if you can fish multiple nymphs in a rig, try a Frenchie with all of them, and that's why I suggest keeping those notepads with you. I'm not affiliated with Right as Rain. It's R I T E as Rain. They're waterproof. I keep it in my bag because if I'm experimenting with things, I will I will fish the same rig all day. If I'm if I want to figure something out. And the fish, the the and I'll and I would tally how many each one catches, how they catch them, where they catch them, water temp, everything. Scientifically, approaching fishing with a fly, right? So that's what I would do. Um, Dylan Mc, Mc, McGinnis, oh Declan McGinnis, thank you so much, my friend, for stopping in. Make sure you leave a thumbs up, and we're so close to giving away that rod and reel, uh, or rods, reels, and stuff. Only a couple, I think, 150. Um, uh, more subscribers, and I'm giving away a rod. So make sure you please get your friends in on this. Okay? Any more questions, guys? Okay, we're rounding about 38 and a half minutes here, but I'd like to keep answering questions if you guys have any more. Okay? I'm like swimming in a sea of hair and marabou right now. Of course, the Chernobyl ant is awesome. Okay? Um, so, uh, the Chernobyl ant is great as a as a terrestrial. It is um, representative of so many different imitations. Uh, in fact, I've even caught um, fish like swimming it like a popper, right? So the Chernobyl ant's great. Um, also, uh, really, I mean, dur during the heat of the summer, when you notice there's lots of wind, you can hear crickets, you can hear grasshoppers, you can hear, okay? That is the time to just chuck, right? Chuck those big, hardy terrestrials. Um, I would probably suggest that if you uh, don't um, feel comfortable or it's not a confidence fly for you or you're not getting tons of strikes, add uh, another dropper, if you will, um, of, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a smaller terrestrial. So like, whether it be just another ant pattern, an, a Griffith's gnat, um, 
or a stimulator even. So sometimes a stimulator will I imitate a bunch of different stuff, you know? So uh, you can experiment with that, especially like wait for big gusts of wind. You'll, you'll notice like big gusts of wind, if you can see fish, they'll act differently because they see the brush around the, uh, the, the, the stream move. They will act differently. They're very in tune with what's going on around them. So Chernobyl Ant gets my thumbs up. <clears throat> and that's in Lucky Tackle Box a lot. All right. Um, having trouble follow others on YouTube on how to, oh, um, to teach a leech, be, to tie a leech because the trout in our river, river blah, 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 I can't speak. I could do a demo, yeah. So um, leech pattern is really dependent. So like you're talking about a woolly, talking about a um, just a, a like a rabbit strip because <clears throat> I would suggest if you if you're fishing a leech pattern um, if you want to use like a, a woolly bugger does that um, a uh, something like this looks like a leech when fished so does a uh, what do you call it so does just a, a, a rabbit strip the easiest pattern I think to imitate a leech would be to take a, a micro rabbit strip I don't think I have any purple or black on me or olive but Trying to find some here. Ooh, this is a couple patterns that these are a couple patterns that I let I forgot about. Um, yeah, I don't have any sitting here. Oh, I do actually. Ah, they're not the right color though. So, if you just take, I don't want to waste <clears throat> a rabbit strip if it's not the right color. But you just basically take a a rabbit strip, usually in a black or olive or purple, and there's a couple ways you can do that. You can, you can. Tie it just on the top if you've added maybe like a little bit of dubbing or whatever. Um, but my suggestion would be to, you can tie on the tail, so after you've snipped it to length, usually the same length as the, the hook shank. <clears throat> so you, you tie it on at the, at the back here, okay, loosely, and then you pull forth a bunch and you can wrap it like this. It's called polymer, polymering it. Like that, kind of like a woolly, and then whenever you tie it, the, the cinch down at the front, when it, it, it it'll lay back on itself, and now you've got a thick body around that that shank of the hook, and um, a nice tail that'll just kind of whip around. My suggestion too, if you want a little additional action out of the back there, match a little bit of marabou first, then the strip, and that will it kind of infuse with the strip and add a little extra, like, whirling, whippy action. So that's the easiest leech pattern that I've fished successfully. Um, so good affordable fly tying gear. I hunt so I can get deer, raccoon, opossum, yoke, fur, turkey feathers. Okay, so I would suggest if you're going to tie nymphs or bass bugs, like, for example, I'm getting prepped for some salt stuff, right? Uh, ooh, this is another good pattern, color combination I've been liking. It's that same type of fly I showed earlier, but it's got a little uh, uh, olive stuff up front. Get some dubbing. All right, I have so much dubbing. I have boxes and boxes of dubbing. Okay, um, and a suggestion would be uh, natural colors first. Okay, um, as I'm sitting here, I say natural. There's chartreuse in here, but for the most part, I use this box more than anything, unless I'm tying uh, intrusion patterns. Um, and then marabou, uh, so a little bit of that marabou, and then um, get some. You can get uh, strung saddles, but you can also just get hackle. Okay, make sure all this stuff is muted tones, um, and uh, you know olives, blacks, stuff. And then it's really hard to beat, um, like peacock curl. Uh, make sure you have good hooks. That's probably the best thing is make sure you have really good hooks. Um, it's hard to say because each pattern requires different stuff. So if you're tying streamers, you'll require different stuff than if you're tying nymphs or dries, you know. So uh, I would suggest my favorite hooks to tie on um, are Umqua, Timco, um, because one, I Lucky like Tackle Box, give them, you know, in the boxes. So I always have a supply. Um, but two, they're super strong. They stay sharp really long time, and I can rehome them. Um, they're a little more expensive than some of the others. Like I've tied them on Max Catch, Barbless too, and they do fairly well. But they go duller quicker. They're super cheap though, 
So if you're just learning to tie and you know you're going to burn through hooks too, so maybe you want to go cheaper. But that's your that's up to you. That's your prerogative. I, I've been there, buddy. So um, good affordable gear. Okay, so we have a couple of options. So the vice you're actually looking right here, it looks like a Regal in a way, but it's not. It's actually a Max Catch rotary vice. Okay, um, and it's fairly inexpensive. So rotary vices are not a necessity, but they're nice. Okay, and so this one right here is I think a hundred to 110. If you use my coupon code, it saves you 15%. So um, on a $110 item, that's significant, right? Uh, I like it. I still have to tweak it because it came like this and I want to change it to personalize it for myself. Another vice, which are actually being lent up against right now, or leaned up against rather, is it's a, you know, I probably should just grab it and show you. Um, this is, oh uh, boy, 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 boy. Okay, come on. This is a Regal, I, I meant this is a Renzetti copy. This is a Regal copy. It's a nice big jawed vise that's that's sprung. It has a spring on it. Um, I like, I've been tying a lot on that too. Um, both of them have their flaws. Both of them have their pros um, or their advantages. So I would, like I tie most of my, most of my ties on this because of the jaws. I like the jaws. Um, but that guy up there that I, that I just showed you um, has tied the majority of these big gnarly salt stuff or bass flies. Um, I also enjoy that one because it's uh, really fast. I don't have to worry about pressure and stuff like that on some of the like some of these. But this whole kit that came with this is like 110, 100. I'd be lying if I gave you a number, but it's very affordable. Like compared to a Renzetti, it's stupid cheap. Now, do I expect them to last as long? That vice right there is years old. This one has been extremely solid for me for the past probably a uh, couple of months. Let's see. Um, and then, as far as the turf, as far as the other tying materials, um, check fishingsir.com, Amazon, eBay. But be careful with eBay. Make sure it's a reputable dealer. A lot of the uh, I'm trying to think of the, you know what, if I, if I think of it, oh, here's another company that does a great job, J. Stockard Fly Fishing, um, I don't know if that's backwards for you or not, I think it is, isn't it, it's J. Stockard Fly Fishing, um, great uh, company, dude is awesome, he sells on Amazon, I believe, too, but everything that, that comes with it, like, I keep this chart, this reference chart right sitting there because sometimes you're like ah, you know I'm sitting here with different beads and I'm like I don't want to th thread the bead on and realize I can't get it so it helps to just have that there you know and so uh, that you know uh, another Avid Max is another one I believe Avid Max um, they're on Amazon I believe too very affordable stuff uh, also check out some forums and stuff because a lot of guys will tell you um, how they prefer things different Marabou's are better different, you know, you can also go to Cabela's, like, for example, a lot of my marabou, if I'm, if I'm getting marabou, deer hair, or, um, not dubbing too much, um, or some of my other materials, like, uh, ooh, if I'm getting hackles, I will definitely go to Cabela's, or go to Field and Stream, and I will go through, I will, I'm the guy that goes in, and I open up the package, and I make sure that if I'm buying marabou, that it's marabou I can use. Sometimes if you buy marabou over the internet and it gets to you, you're disappointed, okay? With thread, not a big deal. Dubbing, not too big big a deal, as long as the colors are the same. But usually, if you go through Amazon or something like that, then you can return what you don't want. But I make sure I, that all my materials are good. Like, I was very surprised how nice the, the bucktail was that came from Max Catch because shipping internationally is definitely difficult to get good materials. They gave that to me, so I was pleasantly surprised. Just started fly fishing. This is Creek TV. I'm looking for a cast to perfect fishing from shore with brush at my back. Okay, so everyone's going to tell you a roll cast, okay? I would say that a roll cast is a great place to start. Once you master getting a roll cast, uh, and a, a tip for you on the roll cast, um, is end high, okay? If you, and if you notice that it's not going where you need to, experiment, 
the start high and then end your cast a little lower and lower and lower. Find that sweet spot for the rod you're fishing and your casting style. Okay? But better than a roll cast is using two-handed or spay casting techniques with a single hand rod. And by doing so, what you can do is if you can get an extra about foot, foot and a half from the bank, instead of a roll cast, and uh, which is a waterborne cast, by practicing different types of, of spay casting with a single hand rod, you're going to get much more distance and energy generated than a roll cast to cast farther. And the biggest difference between a roll cast, and it's so hard to do that, it's showing you right here, is that with a roll cast, actually, with a roll cast where you create the D-loop, the D-loop is going to be very shallow to you, and there's more line on the water, and that line will actually hold on to, the surface tension will hold on to the line um, up from the water. And so when you cast, um, make sure it's a start, it's a, it's a, you load the rod and you really stop dead, right? Um, and what that'll do is it'll rip off the water and roll out. But if you can do so with the rod, line out in front of you, okay, if you can get that, that rod brought back and the line coming uh, behind you, creating a little bit of a bigger D-loop and then load it up and let it roll, okay? Check out, um, I think, I'm going to have to make one, but Rio made a really good video um, of single-handed rods casting space style. And it'll, it'll show you proof in the pudding that you can probably get better casts using, um, you know, space style casting with a single hand rod um, for up close uh, cast style, or like, you know, with brush behind you, um, than a roll cast. But sometimes a roll cast is all you'll need as far as, like, uh, for really tight situations. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um... Trying to find micro strips. Okay, micro strips. Um, I think I have a couple micro strips. Uh, I went to my local stores. Okay, you know, support those guys too. You know, your local shops. I know they're a little more expensive, but uh, they have to put food on the table. You know, and also you can get good info. You know, but in addition to your local shops, um, Amazon is where I find my micro strips. Fishing Sir. I don't know if they carry them right now. Um, also, I think I have a link down below for Fishing Sir. Well, I, not live right now, I won't, but when the video goes um, public. Um, let's see. All right, so Fishing Frenzy, I live in Canada, and uh, the leeches are very long and skinny. Uh, okay, they're super aggressive when it comes to big flies and bright and dark colors. Yeah, so I would suggest you tie maybe even a streamer similar to this using a strip, very thin, long, kind of almost like a trick worm, okay? Don't have any local shops, you know, Mr. Strauss, I am the same way, and that's why my local shops are my Walmart, my Cabela's, my Field and Stream, and those local shops are, well, other than Walmart, hour away, minimum, so that's why my local shop is my computer. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, um... I have issues. I've had CDC is very difficult. That's why I will not buy certain materials over the internet. Um, <clears throat> uh, boy, I would check Stockard. He, if if he doesn't have it, um, probably don't need it. <laughs> he actually has a catalog too, um, so you can order a free catalog online. Um, but check out the Stockard website. Check out. Um, uh, you might even be able to get things delivered to your house from if you order them online from like a, a reputable like Cabela's or Bass Pro or whatever. That way you can um, return them via mail. Usually no questions asked. Um, no problem, Creek. Do you know the Blue Ridge Fly Fishing Group? In um, I do not know the Blue Ridge Fly Fishing Group. I would love to, John, but I don't. Um, I... Uh, don't make it out of state too often with the baby, um, so therefore I, uh, the people I know are the people that chime in to say hi. Um, Fishing Frenzy, I probably could do a shout out series, I just know that um, usually not many people tune into that. Um, but cool news is I will be going down uh, very during the summer to fish with someone who does do a shout out series. Um, 
that is uh, Southern Outdoors Fishing NC. Um, and uh, his name's Tom Farlow, and he's a pretty cool dude. He's going to get me on some red drum, or some redfish, rather. Um, and so I'm excited for that. I've got some stuff coming. Uh, I'm, I'm working on some interesting things. Um, but I'm also just going to throw some clousers, maybe even a couple shrimp patterns. But we'll see if we can, can get into some fish. Any other questions, concerns, comments? I'll take the questions. You can take your own concerns. Do whatever you want. Probably only about five more minutes, guys. Yeah, go ahead, fishing. Mr. Frenzy, please, please, by all means. I have about five minutes left. So, John, um, if you could get me in contact with the Blue Ridge Fly Fishing Group, or shop, rather, that would be cool. Um, I would love to chat with them about some stuff. But, uh, no, I, I'm up in New York, so uh, to make a local stop down would be impossible but I'm all for connecting and getting them up here on some steelhead if they're interested. That would be a fun time. Oh yeah, if you guys uh, would like, I do guide brown trout, bass, um, carp, and uh, steelhead. Um, I have a couple of my own private streams that I uh, take people on for wild browns. Uh, no stockies here. Um, okay, so fly tying, I can't get them tight to the hook. Uh, it, that might be um, a thread issue. So, for example, <clears throat> uh, this right here is UTC 210. Um, and this is what I use as a minimum for streamers. Um, and it's fairly strong. Like, I don't know if I can break it for you here. Ouch. Nope. I can cut my finger, but I can't break it with my fingers just right off the bat. That's not good. Um, that's a minimum. For other streamers, uh, I will go as heavy as... Um, uh, well, there's GSP. GSP is like a standard. Okay, you won't catch Kelly Gallup using anything but GSP. Ouch, I don't know if you can see that, but that's not good. Um, you, can, you can fish with, or you can tie with mono line uh, in fine. You can tie with regular straight mono as well. Um, but I would say your best bet for streamers would be GSP. This is what I use for nymphs even, okay? Especially like uh, zebra midges and things. I can get so many more zebra midges tied uh, using this. Obviously not a size like 22 or 24. But um, whipping up really fast. GSP 50? Yeah, GSP 50 is great. Um, I don't think I have any more. I'm, be I'm really low on thread. Um... Uh, I just, uh, like, even, like, when I tie special steelhead flies, here's 210 Ultra Thread in pink and orange and red. Um, but, uh, I think it's one of those things where you need to know, um, if you need to know, uh, the, the hook you're using, how much give your hook has, how much give and, uh, what do you call it, resistance your spool has to your bobbin, and, um, also, how much play your vice has. And, I mean, I've definitely gone... I, when I'm tying streamers and then I go to a, a nymph, I've definitely, before I <coughs> tie too much into the fly itself, I do test my my strength just to make sure that I'm, I'm physically, muscle memory, aware of what's going on. And I also do whip finish frequently. Usually I'll throw like one or two whip finishes in after every two, three steps. Um, <clears throat> but when you're fit, when you're when you're tying certain materials, if you're wrapping anything, if you're using a rotary, or if you're not, every two, three turns, really pull down on that material. Uh, make sure you're using good. Like I have, I have these um, hackle pliers. I use these as placeholders most of the time for when I can't get my hands on some heavier duty quality hackle pliers. These are max catch ones, and surprisingly, they're super great. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm thoroughly surprised at how nice these things are. When you order things on Amazon from a lot of these like Slick Trick and stuff, well, bad example. The Slick Trick bobbins are great. Um, I would do a fan unboxing for sure. Um, anything that I receive here, I'll unbox for you guys. Um, but like, 
this came from Max Sketch, and it's much higher quality than my other ones. Um, a lot of the same stuff that I received from them looks identical to what Slick Trick puts out. Can you tell me the difference between these two? Other than the fact that I bang them up differently? They're the same exact uh, uh, threader. And one came from Slick Trick, one is a Max Catch. Um, what else, what else? <clears throat> these are my material scissors. These ones are my Max Catch scissors. Great scissors. I mean, it's uh, this uh, is a Max Catch. This is a Max Catch. Looks just like a Slick Trick, right? So that's something you can save money on too. All right, just one or two more minutes. I'll answer the remaining questions that are here. <coughs> then I do have to go. <clears throat> oh, John, that's cool. Okay. Maybe if I'm ever down there, I'll have to head out there. What flies do you recommend for browns and rainbows and medium to moving fast water? Match the hatch. Match the hatch. What time of the season is it? Is it um, winter? Is it spring? Is it summer? <clears throat> um, are you... Do you want to fish dries, nymphs, streamers? I have a, I have a, an assortment that I would keep with me at all times at any given point. Pheasant tail. Um, hare's ear, for sure. Prince nymph, usually, and a zebra midge. <clears throat> French, and variations of that, you know? For dries, Adams. With a parachute, maybe. Without, sure. Royal wolf, because it kind of acts like a stimulator. Um, elk hare caddis. That is my go-to um, for dries, as far as... And a stimulator. I usually carry stimulators, too. Um, just for big stuff. And then a couple ant patterns, some gnats. That should cover you. Um, really, you, you kind of have to know what's going on in the water. You can figure out what, are they, what they're eating. Um, that's why I suggest carrying one of those logs with you, because usually uh, you, you have a better understanding of what's going on annually every time you go back to that water. But yes, Fishing Frenzy, I would love to do a fan unboxing. Mr. Strauss, I have a three weight. What's the largest fly size you would feel comfortable throwing on it? 810. I've thrown streamers on my three weight. It is a different animal, different bear, but I think that any time you feel confident in getting better at casting, you can throw bigger flies. Also, on your three weight, if you overline it by, by one line size, you can throw bigger bugs as well. Now, you're not going to throw them 100 yards, you know? I don't think anybody's going to throw it 100 yards, but throw it 100 feet. Um, but you'd be surprised what you can throw on a three weight with patience and practice. Um, but realistically, a three weight, yeah, anything small stream. Um, I even throw, I've even thrown um, like a Mickey fins on them, okay? Uh, you know, to swing them. So um, it's all about what you feel comfortable with. Also, lot rod length and um, and uh, type also. So I mean, like if you're if you're throwing a nymphing ten footer or ten and a half footer, it would. Uh, it would cast larger flies because it actually is more like a four weight than say a six and a half or six foot three weight three weight. So that's uh, I would experiment and tell me how you do because if you're if you're a good caster, you can probably throw bigger flies. Fly tying videos, yeah, I would do them around trout. Um, difference being, uh, it requires a lot. I have a new camera, um, but it requires a lot of setup, and most of the time, I can't do tying videos until after. My kid goes to sleep, um, and when I do them, uh, it I have to do them upstairs <laughs> um, rather than here because there's a wall right there, and I can't see the camera. I don't have a flip-out screen, so I cannot see the camera on the one that I would that I, I want to start doing tying videos for, with, uh, with. So um, I'll have to figure out a system. It might require a mirror, but um, I'll do my best to get that or a screen of some kind. I'll do my best to start doing more tying videos. <clears throat> yeah, I would love to unbox my camera. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Please, um, shoot me that email, and uh, we'll, we'll chat. Okay? Uh, oh, boy. But uh, that's it, guys. That's all for today. Um, I do have to scoop. To clean up the desk maybe a different time. Um, but uh, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button. Please, please, please. Subscribe to the channel. We're so close to that 5,500 that I can give away the rod. 
and then to 6,000, we can give away the reel. 6,500, I can give away another rod. 7,000, I can give away another reel, and so on and so forth. So spread the good word. Uh, the more stuff I can give away, the more stuff, um, what do you call it, uh, the more stuff I think I can give you know, to you guys. Um, I just uh, want to do right by the fans and the community. So until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Tight lines, and we are out.